Yes, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here. And thank you to the organizers um, for this conference. I was the organizer, local organizer and local host last year in Basel. And I know there is a lot of work to do before such a fantastic conference um, 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 is set up. So thank you very much. The setting approach, a critical appraisal, why should we talk about the setting approach? And I think there are many reasons that we should. One is um, what we heard this morning. Um, Tom, when he talked about the uh, Amsterdam model um, and uh, how they worked, he said uh, a few very interesting points. He said, you can do it. He stressed the importance and power of the city. And at the end, he said, try to do it with the system or try to change the system. You are the system. And this is a really important point also in the setting approach, as we will see in a few minutes. But there are also other reasons. Another one is um, that this year, I attended the Making Cities Livable conference in Ottawa, in Canada. It was a great conference. Topics were walkability, 10 minutes, neighborhoods, well-being and health and so on. And there was a lot of discussion about how to develop neighborhoods and cities to promote well-being and health. As a health psychologist, but also as a person working in um, health promotion and prevention and also in urban development, I expected that the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion and the Setting Approach would be presented uh, and discussed very prominently at this conference since we were in Ottawa. But nobody mentioned the Setting Approach or the Ottawa Charter. This discussions and questions how these developments of the neighborhoods and cities could be approached were, in my opinion, somewhere awkward. Most of the proposed ideas concerned architectural aspects, public transport, and, at best, meeting zones in public space. These aspects are good and important, but they fell short if you want to do something broad and sustainable. I tried to include uh, at this conference a setting approach in the discussions, but nearly nobody knew the setting approach, except to a few people from the health sector. This is a pity because I am convinced that the model, the framework for action of the setting approach offers excellent opportunities to comprehensively tackle neighborhood and urban development projects. Also, and this is maybe a first critical point, also the evidence on the approach is not yet very broad. There are important good empirical bases and evidence that show that the approach is effective. In my view, it is really important to remember this approach, and this is what I'm doing now. Oh, my slides, yes. Okay. Before we look uh, at the setting approach, first of all, what is health promotion and prevention? And Jeff also mentioned a few points. The function of health promotion is to enable people to increase control over their own health. And you see in this sentence that people are in the, in the center of health promotion. Prevention wants um, the elimination or reduction of certain um, undesirable behaviors and environmental conditions. The goals are to strengthen protection factors and to reduce risk factors. But again, the methods and actions to do so, um, we see there is an immense number of measures, but not all are effective. There are good reasons why in 1986, so 32 years ago, the Ottawa Charter introduced the innovative and holistic setting approach. We see here some um, critical points. Health promotion measures to date fall short of the mark. Uh, there was too much focus on behavioral training and personal responsibility. Actions and temporary projects were typical. The range was too short. They reached most desensitized ones, but not um, other persons. And the measures were not sufficiently sensitive to the social situation. 
Now, the Ottawa Charter, um, in, princ in principle, it's about the following two points quoted over here. You can see health promotion works through concrete and effective community action. So again, the community is in the center. In setting priorities, making decisions, planning strategies, and implementing them to achieve better health. And then it goes on and says, at the heart of this process is the empowerment of communities, and also Jeff talked about communities, the ownership and control of their own endeavors and destinies. And if you read further, you see that um, existing human and material resources are important, that self-help and social support and the public participation are important issues. Health promotion pays particular attention to participation and um, co-decision of the population as well as to the involvement um, of the public. And at the end, health promotion is an emancipatory approach. It's a, a, at least in some parts a bottom-up approach. Certainly it's not a top-down approach like most um, actions in, in health promotion and also prevention. What is a setting? A setting is a social context. So the social is important here. That is relatively permanent. And there are different attributes characterizing these um, settings. There are formal organizations, um, regional situation like municipality, district, or neighborhoods, the common life situation, but also, and this is also a real important point if we talk about Ottawa Chart and setting approach, the values and preferences. I will come back to this later. At the end, the objective um, is to promote health supportive living environments and settings. This slide is important to understand what the setting approach really is. The setting approach means much more than the achievement of the target group within the setting. What we see here um, in red, color red, settings as a frame for the intervention. In this view, health promotion and prevention is done in the setting. The setting forms a framework for the intervention and it guarantees accessibility and identification. So the focus is on the individual and its behavior oriented. But the meaning, what the setting is, and the setting approach is what you can see here in the green uh, picture. The setting is the object of the intervention. Health promotion, and it's really important, and health promotion and prevention is done with the setting, so with the people together. The environmental conditions of the setting that affect health are developed. And the focus is on the structural development. There are two reasons why this um, view, this understanding of the setting um, is important. First, it is known that the context conditions of a setting affect our health um, and the health of the members of the settings. These contextual conditions include structural, formal and cultural aspects and these cultural aspects also include attitudes and values. A setting in which, for example, sexism, racism, ageism, or homophobia prevail has negative consequences for the affected members, but also for other people in the setting. The good thing is that precisely these contextual conditions that can be made the object of the project or a long, longer term development. Preventive and health-promoting interventions can be aimed directly at changing the context, including values and attitudes. The second point, second reason, concerns the processes of how it can be done. And here, the focus is on joint development, empowerment, and participation. That is really crucial. The challenge here is that uh, partic participation is not just a method, how to involve people. Above all, it's also an attitude. It's an attitude whether you want to involve people, it's an attitude whether you want to share the power, and it's an attitude if you want to share competences, including decision competences. 
at least in certain aspects. Also here, the good thing is that it is feasible, and there are many good examples um, that show that this um, can be done. Also, this graphic is important. It's a simplified way that shows um, the complexity of um, the setting approach. On the right side, we first have the known individual focused approaches. These are still important, but when, um, then we have also on the other side the context-oriented approaches on the left, as I um, mentioned before. And the third integral element of this model is participation. These are aspects, um, these three aspects need to be com coordinated and implemented in a coherent unit. It is always a holistic way of working. This um, slide shows um, what participation is. Um, it's important to show that participation does not stop with information for the people or with assessment of needs. Um, but this is what we see in many projects that they say we have a participatory approach, but they stop after the assessment. Um, participation means also include the people in um, developing, um, um, collaborating, um, to be part of the decisions. And this is really a crucial um, point in the setting approach. Again, the setting approach means much more than the achievement of the target group within the settings. I think I have mentioned most of these points on the slide, so I want to pick up only um, this one public health action cycle is a, is a part of, of the method when you work uh, within, within the um, setting approach. So the four phases are problem determination, strategy, implementation, and evaluation. And it's really important also to evaluate at the end what you have done, have you done what you wanted, and have you um, achieved your goals. And so this is a part of the evidence production that we heard also in the previous um, talk, really important. In more recent literature now, um, there is mention of super settings. First, we see on the left side, there are the already known principles that I have mentioned. In, in this model, super setting means, um, for example, that the municipality that uh, can be seen as a setting and it's containing many more sub settings like work site, hospital, school, nursing home, and so on. And if you work uh, with a setting approach, you can work within the entire super setting or with the individual subsettings. This model um, allows a certain complexity to be subdivided in sub-elements, and this can help when the, the setting, for example, a city, is too large, at the scale is too large to work with participatory and uh, community-oriented methods. Well, for me, this approach is not really new. Almost 20 years ago, we worked with municipalities in Switzerland in exactly this way. We had all these sub-settings included in a big setting, and we have done a lot of um, development work. What you see here is an example of a participatory process in a, in a community, in a municipality, also in Switzerland. It was um, almost 10 years ago. And here we worked uh, with many stakeholders at this local level, such as young people, older people, professionals, representatives um, of many institutions, such as schools, administration, gastronomy, and so on. And we wanted to, to jointly work, work out what um, challenges exist in this uh, community, in this municipality, and uh, what resources they have already, but also what ideas are, uh, were avail available for development among the stakeholders participating. And this, is, was all, this was always the first step in a longer a joint process for prevention. What you see here is um, the example um, of um, um, 
um, setting oriented tobacco prevention project in schools and municipality, also in Switzerland. And what you can see here is the result after a, a, a lot and long preparatory work, the pupils designed and texted these posters together with the teachers, with prevention experts, with adults, with the print shop, with the graphic artists in, in, her, in, in the um, village. With these posters, a concern of the pupils is documented but something which could be um, shared already in development with others. In these posters, it says on the left side, uh, smoke-free zone because everyone needs liberty and uh, smoke-free zone because respect is important. And we had a scientific evaluation of this project and we see it, it worked, it worked. In the public space, around sport events and so on, the adults hardly smoked anymore after this um, setting-oriented approach. We have seen the setting approach uh, means intervention in social systems. It's a holistic concept. It aims for long-term changes. And it's focused on self-development of the system. So Tom said, change the system. And here we see we can change the system. But the setting approach is also, to some extent, a normative concept. As I have said at the beginning, impact research is difficult because the systems are complex and many uncontrolled influences have an effect. But there are many indications and there is evidence that the approach is an effective framework for health promotion and prevention. Approaches such as good practice or best practice, as well as evidence concepts that includes both on the one hand side, on one side the science-based evidence, but also the practice-based evidence are suitable. Come to my last slide. What um, I want to show here is we just finished a, a small research project, a literature, literature research. Uh, we wanted to know what are the success factors and recommendations for prevention projects according to the setting approach, such as municipalities. And we have found um, um, literature-based, evidence-based 21 factors on different levels like planning and concept, structure, process, and outcomes. And I want just to mention only two points at the structure level. You can see here the regional cooperation and local working group. And here again, these are success factors involving the people, work with the people um, in these settings. So what we can see here now, the setting approach is uh, from the Ottawa Charter is much more than a normative concept. And for the end, if, if you want to do it, if you want to take the time and if you want to invest enough resources to work with the setting approach, then the people in the settings can only win. So it, it is like Michel said this morning, it's a question of choice. Thank you very much.